Look at it. Look at it. You know what you did. It's 2022. This is the era of inclusivity and breaking down gatekeepers. And most of you think smartphones aren't real cameras. You can fight me. I'm gonna fight you. I'm gonna tell you why you're wrong. First, I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes websites incredibly easy, no matter what type of camera you use. Drag your pictures in, make a beautiful portfolio, take appointments from clients, sell prints in your store, whatever you can imagine, Squarespace makes it easy. Head to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Set it up completely free, no credit card required. And when you love it, use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off. Back to being mad. This is actually ridiculous because I was there the last time an elitist group of gatekeepers decided to declare one type of camera, not a real camera. You see, 25 years ago, I was shooting film and I was doing wildlife photography on my own website, selling prints, selling images, making a living at photography. I was using a real camera, a Canon Elan 2E, and then painstakingly scanning in all my film. When the Canon 10D or D10 came out, I immediately bought one. The image quality, significantly lower than my old film camera, but the workflow was so much better. Switching to a digital camera saved me so many hours of processing and scanning that it meant I could take more pictures, it meant I had more fun with photography, it meant I made more money at photography. The digital camera was a real camera, but not in the eyes of the photo community at the time. Digital cameras were seen as toys and photographers using these digital cameras were not real photographers. They were nerds who liked gadgets and couldn't be bothered to process real film and didn't care about image quality, things like that. Those gatekeepers were wrong. And you're wrong if you think smartphones aren't real cameras. I've been talking with you, trying to figure out your ridiculous rationale so I can pick it apart. And so now I'm gonna do that. Now before you go write some angry comment, listen to me, because I am going to address your concerns one by one. The first is image quality. Smartphone image quality is so bad. I, okay, maybe I'd take some quick snapshot for social media, but I would never try to make a print with it or something else. This is mostly nonsense. This idea was probably formed in three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, when smartphone cameras genuinely sucked, when they produced essentially unusable images. In 2022, with modern smartphone cameras, cameras like the Google Pixel 6, the iPhone 13 Pro, the Samsung S22 Ultra, these cameras actually beat most $500 cameras. Beat them. With their kit lenses, they beat them. That end of story. Chelsea and I took our real cameras out to Acadia, Maine. Look how much better the smartphone photo looks. It pulled in all the details from the clouds while not underexposing the foreground. Sure, smartphones are okay at wide angles, but you really need a real camera for telephoto, right? Look at this photo taken of a faraway home. The smartphone just doesn't have the reach. And what if we try to crop? The detail's just not there, but this picture has a ton of detail. Here's the thing, the picture on the right was taken with a smartphone. The picture on the left, a thousand dollar kit camera. Oh sure, in bright light, but what about low light? They beat them more in low light, genuinely. Here, the thousand dollar A6400 took a photo at ISO 6400, shooting wide open with its kit lens iPhone was able to shoot at ISO 800 thanks to better stabilization and a prime lens. Zoom in. The iPhone photo is both cleaner and more detailed. In low light situations, maybe you should grab your phone instead of a kit camera. Don't believe me? Here's another low light example. The iPhone photo looks so much better so much more detail, so much less noise, despite its smaller sensor, because it's doing more with it, thanks to computational photography and fast prime lenses. Okay, but what about putting the iPhone against a high-end full-frame camera? The Canon R3 with a 24-70 f2.8 is about $8,000. Zoom in. The iPhone image is cleaner, thanks to the computational photography, but the R3 does have a little bit more detail. It's close. If we zoom in here, the iPhone images are clearly readable but the R3 pictures are just a little bit crisper. That's the difference between your smartphone and an $8,000 rig. What about night photography? Here's the best shots I could get handheld with a real $1,000 camera kit 
and my iPhone. The iPhone was able to stabilize the shot over eight seconds, even handheld. It pulled so many stars out of the sky despite it being kind of cloudy and half moon. The conventional camera couldn't stabilize such a long shot, but what about a more expensive camera on a tripod? Here you go, the $6,000 Canon R3 with a $2,000 professional lens on it versus the Google Pixel 6 Pro at $900, both on a tripod. Right away, you can see the Pixel's colors are much nicer. That could be fixed in post, let's zoom in. The R3's image is noisy and it shows long star trails. The Pixel, I think it actually looks better. The Pixel tracks the movement of the stars and eliminates the star trails and uses computational photography to eliminate all the noise in the sky too. The R3's approach is expensive and kind of brute force and the results not quite as good, but I don't need to prove that the Pixel is better than the R3. I just need to show that it's good good enough to be called a real camera. If I shorten the exposure enough to eliminate the star trails on the R3, you can see the sky becomes a noisy mess. Here, clearly, the Pixel wins. Now, okay, there are limits to it. If you get a $3,000 Sony a7R4 with 60 megapixels and you put on a $3,000 professional grade lens, yes, you can get more detail. You can get more dynamic range if you're very careful about it and you bracket your shots and you know what you're doing. But if you think not beating the best cameras makes smartphones not real cameras, then you have to consider the lower end entry level cameras not real cameras either, right? If that is your criteria. If your criteria is around image quality, then either you have to consider smartphones real cameras or you have to consider those entry level cameras not real cameras. Here's another argument from the elitists who don't think that smartphones are real cameras. Real cameras have buttons and knobs, real controls that professionals need to adjust their settings. I agree, real cameras should have a professional feature set that allows photographers to capture the images that they need. Maybe look at the Sony Xperia Pro I, which has a real shutter button that you half press and then locks into focus. It has a little hook for your camera strap. Okay, it doesn't have nine customizable physical buttons, a bunch of dials on it. I admit, I like those things in the real world but there's a bunch of other professional photographer features that your real camera completely lacks. Let's imagine you're a commercial photographer and you get hired to shoot the brand new top secret BMW. If this leaks, it is a huge problem. It will cost the company millions and end your career. As a professional, of course, your camera would have basic features to help you out with that. Of course, it would have encrypted files, right? Of course, it would have some privacy. So if somebody took the camera, they wouldn't just instantly get access to all of these features that they'd then be able to extort you for or just share it on the internet. Of course, it would have instant real-time backups to the cloud, right? After all, they might only give you access to the prototype for four hours, so you can't go back and reshoot. These are basic features that any real professional camera would have. And guess what camera does have that? literally every smartphone, even the least expensive smartphones, and literally none of your real cameras. None of them have any of those security features, redundancy features, none of them have anti-theft technology. If someone were to steal it, it's all the data is theirs and you can never track it down and they can sell it and make money from it. And that's why photographers are so often targeted. Look, my daily shooter with its lens costs about $8,000, $9,000. I am a target when I'm out in public because I like to use this big expensive real camera. And as a result, I frequently leave it at home and use my other real camera, my smartphone. Why? Because nobody's gonna steal it because it has any theft technology. I could just brick it. The only thing they could do is take it apart and sell the few parts inside of it for 20, 30 bucks and nobody's gonna risk going to jail for that. And as a result, any theft technology really works your professional camera totally at risk. But this real camera has other professional features that I, as a professional videographer and photographer, absolutely need, like workflow features. Do you know so often in the videos on our YouTube channel, we use a conventional camera to record it, but then we go back and get B-roll with a phone. You know why? Because the conventional camera has this outdated workflow of transferring images on memory cards, essentially old tiny floppy disks. You have to physically transfer it. My phone, I can just use AirDrop right to my Mac. It takes a couple of seconds, transfers at amazing speed. Actually, I don't even have to do that because it's already synchronized everything out to iCloud and then downloaded it back to my computer. So everything's automatically waiting there. It'll even get automatically synced into Lightroom Creative Cloud because all my pictures automatically appear in Lightroom. Of course, of 
course, professionals need these workflow features. So if you're a professional, you need these workflow features, you need these security features. I guess a conventional camera isn't a real camera if we use professional feature sets to define which cameras are real cameras. Not to mention that this real camera can do the entire workflow from capturing the image, reviewing it, editing it, publishing it. It can even live stream to places like TikTok or Instagram, you know, places where pretty much every professional photographer and videographer has a presence that is essential to their business. This is a real tool for visual storytellers, a real tool for professionals and a real camera. I know some of you out there don't believe me. You still don't think this is a real camera. Just hold on. I'm going to address the rest of your arguments. I'm going to tell you why smartphone photographers are real photographers that deserve your respect. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace, which makes websites a key part of sharing the visual stories that you need to tell people, whether it's your latest photo project or a website for your business, photography related or not, Squarespace is the perfect place for it. Head to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Set your site up completely free just to try it out. I promise you will love it. When you do, use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off. Okay back to arguing. Not only are smartphones real cameras, but smartphone photographers are real photographers. Do you remember that hashtag follow me to trend that went on Instagram for a while? I even recreated it myself. One of the most famous trends of all time by a very famous photographer who can actually make a living at photography. And he did it with an iPhone. And that was like 10 years ago. Now he actually did upgrade to a conventional camera. This first camera was a 5D Mark II. Why? Because at the time, the iPhone did not have a super wide angle lens. And for that particular shot, he needed it to be super wide angle. But everything else could be done with a smartphone just fine. And in fact, modern smartphones like the iPhone here have super wide angle lenses. And in fact, they have a far better range of focal lengths than a conventional camera. And that is very typical of the trend we've seen how smartphones have evolved. They used to be much worse than conventional cameras, but now actually superior in many ways, including the standard focal length. My Samsung S22 Ultra goes from 13 millimeters to 223 millimeters, I think, built in. That is so cool. There is no lens that I can get for any camera that covers ultra wide, all the way to super telephoto. It does not exist. Well, actually it does. It's built into this real camera. Okay, I know some of you are mad about this right now. You have some argument that you're furiously typing into the comments, but let me try to address some of that. Some of you are saying, okay, if smartphones are real cameras, then why do I see you with $20,000 in gear when you're shooting wildlife photography? Smartphones are not great for wildlife photography right now. But the standard camera that you'd get from Best Buy would not be good at wildlife photography. The Canon R3 that's sitting there dead right now with my 24 millimeter lens, this would not be good for wildlife photography. I'd have to attach a more expensive lens. You don't have to be good at every single type of photography to be a real camera. Photographers, videographers, we're visual storytellers, we're creators. We use different tools for different jobs. You wouldn't judge a carpenter by the tools he used, right? No, you would judge the carpenter by the results. And the carpenter probably has a variety of different tools, all of which are real tools. Okay, next argument. If smartphones are real cameras, then how come all the photographers I follow are using conventional cameras? Okay, first, if you think smartphones aren't real cameras, then you're probably not following the young generation who's producing amazing images with their smartphones across so many genres. Portraits, landscapes, fine art, and photojournalism too. Have you seen the photojournalism coming from real cameras and real photographers using smartphones out of Ukraine? It is changing the course of the war. It is telling the world what is happening in real time. And they don't require the training that would be required of a Canon or Sony or Nikon camera with their complex menu systems. These cameras would not work in these situations. They need something that fits in their pocket. They're surviving harsh conditions. They need something that's waterproof. They need to get the message out immediately without having to move a memory card over to a computer on the desk. They don't have that luxury. But smartphones provide all of that because they're real cameras and the people who use them are real photographers producing moving, important 
images that could not possibly be created in that way with a conventional camera. Whether you agree or not, I have three things that I want you to do. The first is to actually learn your smartphone camera. If you use a conventional camera, you probably read the manual or you watch a tutorial. Do the same for your smartphone. Figure out how to adjust the exposure, shoot raw, learn about all the different video modes, figure out how to create bokeh, how to use cinematic mode on the iPhone, which I'm using now. Even if it's not gonna be your daily shooter, it's a fantastic backup and it is a unique tool that fills a niche that your conventional camera doesn't. Maybe your conventional camera runs out of batteries or you need to film something in the rain. Make sure you can get the best images possible out of your smartphone. The second thing I need you to do is to understand the situations where the smartphone will beat your conventional camera. Of course, any live streaming situation, anytime you need a quick turnaround, the smartphone's going to win. But smartphones, modern smartphones, generally better in low light conditions than conventional cameras, even expensive cameras, even with fast primes. Computational photography is amazing. And it's also real photography. My last request for you is to treat smartphone photographers like real photographers, because they are. If you like a chef, it's because of the food he makes, not the knives that he uses. You don't care about what tools a carpenter uses. You care about the results. The same is true for photography, for video. You care about the results. You do not care about the pixels. People don't notice that stuff. They notice the story, the feeling, the emotion. And often the smartphone is so much better at capturing those things. It's discreet. They're literally everywhere. You look weird if you don't have one in your hand, right? Smartphones are incredibly powerful. Please respect them and the people who use them. I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace, who makes this podcast possible. No matter what type of website you need, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Get your own private domain instead of using Gmail or Yahoo or some nonsense. Get something with your last name that supports your brand. You might even need to get multiple different Squarespace websites. Get one for your family portraits. Get one for your fine art photography. Create separate brands for yourself so that you can appeal to different markets. You might even create two different portrait brands so that you can have a low-end market and a high-end fine art portrait market. I have four or five Squarespace websites. So you need at least two or three. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and sign up now, try it out completely free. If you love it, use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. And of course, in the comments down below, I wanna hear your remaining arguments. The greater than 50% of you who don't think smartphones are real cameras, tell me why. Or if it changed your mind, I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching. A few things I wanna follow up on after I recorded the video, that poll shifted. So the slight majority of people now agree that smartphones are real cameras. Those of you still in the minority, I'd like to hear your reasoning. Second point, halfway through the video or so, my Canon R3 ran out of batteries and I improvised and I switched to my iPhone 13 Pro Max. And I'd like to hear what you think of how it did as a video camera that was using cinematic mode and it was an emergency, but I was actually pretty impressed with how it looked. And check this out. I was able to use the rear camera on the iPhone even without a flip screen because I could see myself on my watch to compose the shot and start and stop recording. How cool is that? Third, I did a lot of shooting this past weekend with the Samsung S22 Ultra. In our initial review, we found color problems. I realize now those problems were introduced by Lightroom Classic and the way it processes the heck files. I don't know if it's Lightroom's fault or Samsung's fault, but either way, we're going to update that video with reprocessed images, which gives the Samsung a significant boost. And I am really impressed with that camera. Please subscribe to support this channel and to see our upcoming reviews of smartphones, other cameras, as well as tutorials, no matter what type of camera you're using. Bye.